Hey guys, welcome to the FIFA Sage. So this is the part 2 of the previous video I uploaded about some of the defensive mistakes that make you consider a lot. So we'll be continuing with the list that will be number 5 in this video. So if you haven't seen the part 1, make sure you check the description of this video. There will be a link to redirect you to that. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of the tutorial on the channel. So now that's out of the way, let's keep right into the video. So number 5 defensive mistake is not using the slide tackle. Not using the slide tackle is like giving up one of the most vital weapon in your arsenal. Think of the jockey as an assault rifle and the slide tackle as a shotgun. Though the assault rifle is very durable and gets the job done after a little while, the shotgun is very little, direct and get the job done instantaneously. That's the same for the slide tackle in this case, cause when it's properly timed it helps you win the ball back almost instantly. Other than winning the ball, it has variety of uses. They include blocking shots, making interception, and quick recovery of the ball. Sometimes you can even use the slide tackle to manipulate your opponent's choices and detect the flow of the game. Let's take this scenario where my opponent is in my box and is trying to create an opening to take a shot. I know I wasn't going to get the ball back, but I needed to make him shooting from this angle not a viable option. So I slid there and he took the bait and then changed his direction to try and reposition for a shot. And after anticipating that I would most likely do this, I've already jockeyed a player in place to make the block. I'm not saying you should abuse the slide tackle by using it anyhow without timing it. I'm saying if used properly, the slide tackle can be a trump card. In cases where you're absolutely sure that your opponent is most definitely going to shoot, you can use the slide tackle to block the shot. The downside is that sometimes you can get faked out and the opponent might still be able to create a goal out of the situation. To an extent, when sliding to block shot is mostly a gamble, but it's a risk that really pays off if it works. And in some cases, your opponent is about to create a dangerous chance at a critical time in the match. You can easily just take your opponent's player leg as a souvenir and take your card with pride if it means you are going to seal the win. So if you are trying to recover the ball from your opponent, before you go for the slight tackle, make sure your opponent takes a heavy touch. The moment when the ball is slightly away from him, that's the precise time to strike. So the slight tackle is very effective for stopping your opponent's attack and the uses are very fast. So make sure you practice using it properly and start implementing your gameplay. So quickly before we continue, if you're looking to buy cheap FIFA 22 coin, please check out worldgaming.net. It's a secure site where you can purchase FIFA coin at a good rate and if you use my code FIFA Sage, you get 10% discount on your purchase. The link's in the description. So number 6, we have jockeying without sprinting. Just joking with L2 and low when you're trying to win the ball back from your opponent is not enough because they can easily outpace you or beat you with a quick skill move. You have to know how to do the sprint joking. The sprint joking is simply holding L2 together with the button you assign to your sprint in your controller. It could be R1 or R2. Whatever the case is for you, you have to hold the L2 button and your sprint button together while you caress your left stick to try and get into a good position to win the ball back. Holding your sprint button alongside the jockey button will give your jockey movement a lot more speed and you have more time in your hands to react to what your opponent is dishing out. Knowing how to alternate between the sprint jockeying and the normal jockeying is what will propel you to the next level when it comes to defending. I explain a bit more on alternating between normal jockeying and sprint jockeying in my FIFA 22 tactical defending tutorial so make sure you check it out in the description. So at number 7 we have using two slow center backs. I know some gamers like playing players in their natural position, maybe because they want to get an organic feel to the game. But at some point you have to realize that it is a game and if you really want to win consistently, you have to adopt tactics and strategies that will enable you to do that. So using two slow CBs is like shooting yourself in the leg already because immediately you're up against an opponent that has really fast players, you most likely get caught slipping. Not necessarily because you don't know how to defend but just because your players are too slow to keep up. So immediately they are running at you. Before before you're able to respond in one of your CBs, they might have already broken through. So how do you rectify this? So the solution to this is changing one of the CB to a much faster player. You can go to your team management and see if there is anybody available that has a decent pace and overall is not a bad player. But if you can't find anybody, an easy fix to this is switching one of your fullbacks with your CB. Typically, the fullback has more pace than the CBs, so that will be your substitute CB. You can either play the original CB as a fullback or simply find a replacement for that fullback role. But I highly recommend you doing this because having at least one CB with pace, even if it was converted from a fullback role, will give you a lot of defensive options when your opponent is attacking. 
a trick I use when I use a pair of a faster and a slower CB. Always select the slower CB and push them forward to press the player with the ball while you leave the faster one behind because it's your best bet of intercepting any troopers or obstructing any dangerous run. Always go for the initial tackle with the slower CB. They are in most cases stronger in terms of strength and ability to win back the ball, so it's a safe bet. But in the case they get beaten, you always have your last resort at the back, which is your faster center back. But if your team already has a CB that is really fast, you just need to work on reacting faster and jockeying better. So at number 8, we have not using the second man press properly. As we all know, using the second man press can be a useful tool when it comes to defending because it allows the AI to press automatically for you while you can control another player to get into a better position, press from a different angle or simply fall in deeper to mark a player. That's really the ideal use of the second man press but you see some gamers in FIFA using the second man press just like the team press, just running with two of your players directly at your opponent's attacker without even trying to read the game. If you use it in this manner, you most likely see those two players has been beaten easily just by a wet time pass and then two of your players is out of position and your opponents can capitalize. In order not to let this be the case, you need to nurture the idea of the second man being like a decoy in the sense that you're sending the player in to press the player with the ball while you are using the other player you're controlling to do something better like jerking towards the player to try and cut out the pass getting in a better position or coming from a different angle overall trying to limit the option of your opponent's attackers when the second man press is used like this then you start to see the real beauty in it i'm not really going to do much on the second man press in this video i made a complete video dedicated on knowing how to use the second man press correctly so if you're interested in learning more about the second man press you can check out that video in the description so guys that's all for the defensive mistakes that make you concede. I hope you found these tips helpful and the solutions I provided are something you can apply to your gameplay. If you did, please give this video a like, that always helps. And you can drop a comment on which of these mistakes you know you are guilty of. And lastly, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please smash the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell so you get notified when I release new FIFA 22 tutorial. Thank you for watching. Cheers guys.